love the design of Dreamland. Yeah. Um, and it's hard not to watch that the movie, though, and kind of see some parallels to Disneyland. Yes. And I'm wondering how intentional that was to kind of make it evoke yeah. that old Disneyland feel. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if it was so much like, you know, something intentional. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 we really trace back to, like, the Coney Island and Luna Park of that time period. Mm -hmm. And uh, without giving away too much of our story, uh, there were... You know, there were some big fires that destroyed those parks, like back back around the turn of the century, and, and they were all built out of wood and everything. Right. So, so I, I think a lot of the jumping off point was more those worlds, like Coney Island. Mm -hmm. It was also that time period where they were making these destination parks where people would travel mm -hmm. to a park rather than what they were used to at that point was the circus coming to your own town. But yeah, when, when you see uh, mm -hmm. when you see Dreamland with that really distinguished yeah. D. You can't help but think of Disney a little bit, mm. but but it's a Disney film, so you can't you know, you, you can't go trashing course, you know their own park. But uh, but yeah, I think there's you know obviously Walt Disney made an incredible park. Mm -hmm. I mean that was like something completely new, and I think a lot of our worlds within Dreamland, there's like things that parallel yeah. a little bit of the worlds that you found in in the original Disneyland. It's fascinating to think then that there's almost like. If if Disney were a worse person, maybe he would have gone down the route of VA Van Der Exactly, <laughs> it could it could have gone a much different way. You know what I mean? So, yeah. But luckily, it didn't, and we were able to reimagine Dumbo. So we're it's happy fun. Yeah, that. it's fun to kind of explore it in that way. And, and Tim had talked about like this is almost his opportunity to build a park of his dreams. So was there how much of 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 it was like let's sit down with Tim and talk about what he would want to see in yeah. his dream park? A absolutely. Yeah. You know, Rick Heinrichs, uh, someone that worked with Tim mm -hmm. from the early days when they both worked at Disney. So. It was kind of a cool, like, you know, full circle moment. Right. You know, these guys started at Disney when they were very young. They started in animation and stop motion. Mm -hmm. And then here they are having the opportunity to kind of build that world. And I know Tim's a fan of roller coasters and parks and stuff. Yeah. So uh, between him and Rick, they really did work out the kinds of things that you'd see, the, the types of roller coasters. What, what would they be called? What would the lighting be on them? And uh, that was something that carried on through, you know, the entire post-production was kind of realizing that world. and. Uh, it, it's it's so grand and amazing to see it kind of come together like that. Yeah, absolutely. You have something very rare. You have wonder. You have mystique. You have magic. Wow! Aside from the fun of getting to build his own park as part of this movie. I mean, obviously, Tim Burton's a pretty in-demand guy. Do you, what is it about Dumbo that kind of drew him and, and yeah. your whole team to this project? Yeah. Well, I think D Dumbo you know, was one of the original outsiders you know, for the original film mm -hmm. almost 80 years ago. So I think you know, it's something that everybody remembers it you know, throughout your life. And Tim, obviously, being fond of Disney and beginning his career at Disney, he had a fondness for that character. But he also is a champion of the outsider. It's something that people are seeing as something negative, he uses that to his advantage to, to rise above mm -hmm. and soar, literally. Yeah, so, yeah. literally. <laughs> the, the character design of Dumbo itself is, is gorgeous. And it, it really kind of fits into this, this aesthetic that we've come to recognize as like very Burton-esque. What are some of the key Burton touches that you think are, are present in this film? Yeah. In, in a way, it is kind of the ultimate Tim Burton movie because I feel like each one of the elements, all the, the departments from the set design to, to the cinematography to the costumes, they're all equal characters. The music, Danny Elfman, they, yeah. they're all a present character. Everything's a character and, and a strong one in this one. And, and I feel like it's a real beautiful and lush world, you know. And, you know, I think people equate the original animated film with a lot of darkness and, and, and kind of harsh realities. But I feel like there's a lot of, of light and beauty in this film. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think when people maybe watch it again, they'll, they're going to pick up on a lot of things maybe they didn't capture the first time. There's so much nuance in the film. Interesting. Yeah, you're talking about this nuance and how lush it is. Is there like a specific detail that maybe would be considered an Easter egg that you're very fond of? Is there something that we should watch closely for? Well, you, you know, there's lots of nods to, to the original film. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's lots of nods from, you know, Timothy Mouse to the Elephants on Parade. Yeah. So, so, so there's, you'll see on the DVD, I don't want to spoil anything mm -hmm. because I think <laughs> they want you to kind of explore them yourselves, but there is a, a kind of a long list of things that, you know, some are subtle, some not so mm -hmm. subtle. Uh, but we, we kind of worked hard to make sure that those things were all present in, in the film. Fly, Dumbo. Fly.
fly. 